Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Okay, thank you, Mr. Producer. We are back, and I'm joined by the one and only Miss Catherine Manning um, from um, Southern Fried Spirituality. Uh, she's the owner over there. How are you today? I'm great. I'm great. I'm happy to see. I'm still fighting a little bit of a <laughs> thing, but you'll see. I won't do anything too embarrassing, but I might be a little bit hoarse and raspy, but that makes me sexy. <laughs> well, I know that you you were an actress. Are you sure you weren't like uh, a comedian? Did you ever do any stand up? Have you? You did. I once, and that should give it away. I was terrible at it. I, I well, they had this audition once because I lived in New York for twenty years. That at your rising star. Actually, I did it twice. And the first time I was so good and everybody was, yeah, and they stood up and I had this wonderful and experience. And then the second time I bombed, <laughs> I, I bombed. I mean, it was so embarrassing. It was just, you know, I mean, I can't even tell you what it's like to stand up and nobody laughs. It's hard. So, wait, that was funny. But that was the same experience I had when I moved to Southern California to LA because I'm so funny and I speak so quickly and I'd say, Bleh, and they'd be like, beat, beat. Beat, and they looked at me like I farted or something. It's like, oh, come on. <laughs> it's not, this is funny, but I think it's too much sunlight here. There's too much that goes in the top of the head, but um, <laughs> it's not as quick and verbal. You, so, you know, usually the, the Southern, they, they say it's, uh, it's a little bit slower, but uh, yeah. you, you are yeah. right out of the gate. Uh, well, I'm grew and, and I grew up in the South. I've just never been placed anywhere. But the thing is, my mind goes real fast and I speak like I'm, there's no, as my husband used to say, ain't no filtration. No filter. <laughs> <laughs> no filter he said that too because he was from long island but i um but yeah and that's it and so moving here was well, what am i gonna do i can't they said well let your new york scrub off and i said what the f and i still cursed way too much but it's my charm yeah yeah and um if if you can before we get into because there's something that's really interesting i want to talk uh about this this energy protocol uh, almost like it's a workshop, almost like a, a boot camp, because you've done workshops before. You've had people come in and um, you've taken them through. How long have they lasted in the past? Well, I, I, I did. Um, I used to do workshops like every six weeks and um, they, they were fantastic. I did them all on a variety of, of subjects. I'm interested in so much and I've trained in so much. Yeah. And, um, then COVID happened and I haven't really done too many except on Zoom. But one of the things I was developing with my former husband, who was a corporate executive, a, law, a lawyer in a in a law firm, a partner, is I we were going to go into, and he he was the one he ran interference, and he got me the work, and I just did all the work work once the work work happened. Um, I would teach what I knew because I use, I don't teach anything I don't do. I just won't. I mean, so my being, my body is my petri dish. So if <laughs> I do something, I'm teaching it. You're gonna, I do it, right. and I'm for the pudding because I. I don't know. I just, I get, I've, all my life I've gotten sick a lot. I just get sick, but it, I don't think like, oh God, I am sick. I just get well. And sometimes I don't mind being sick because I get a break and I get to lay in bed and watch TV. So that, it doesn't bother me. I don't think good, bad, yes, yin, yang, black, white. I don't think like that. It's just, I'll get well. I, I go to doctors. I don't see a difference between Western and Eastern medicine. I think that's all a crock. Everything is God. Everything's the same. So I take a pill, it's God. If I take a herb, it's God. It doesn't matter to me. I'll get well. So I teach all I don't I don't teach medicine, although I was once reported for prescribing medicine without a license. Uh oh. I, I, well, I, well I, I did it. I mean, I, I I gave one of my samples of of antidepressants that somebody had given me in my office. I gave it to somebody, she reported me. I went in front of the judge and he goes, Did you do that? I said, Yes. And he went, You just told the truth. I said, well, I did it. And he said, hmm, don't ever do it again. Nice. Yeah. Well, what was going to do? Sure I, that. that's, I that did is, it. That. But I did it. I did. I gave it to her. And I didn't Take say responsibility like that. It's awesome. Well, that, yeah, he, okay, well, I did it. And it didn't have my name on it or anything. And he said, don't do it again. But thank you for telling the truth. And he took the courtroom. He went, did you hear that? Did you <laughs> that woman told the truth. Yeah. But like, what? Good God. That was that was that was easy. You know, I lied more during my divorce divorce trial, <laughs> which which everybody lies, and that's what the judge said to do. I swear to God, she said to. But anyway, which is really troubling. But I think um. So here it is. Okay, cracking me up. Okay, <laughs> I love that. I, thanks for laughing. I like it when people laugh. I think the most direct path to God is laughter. 
because if you can't laugh, what and there are people who are simply morose. And it's like, get out of my sight, man, because nobody's had some harder times than me. Let me tell you, I may laugh a lot, but oh, boo hoo hoo, I could really make I could make you cry. If you wanted to. I can, but I'm not gonna make it. I right. don't want to. Right. Don't you'd, you'd rather be happy, you'd rather be uh yeah, but it's not a, just a, that a, I really am happy. It's not because I'm faking it. It's like just get over yourself. Everybody has woes. Uh uh-uh. you know. Saint, I'm not, I'm a segue, but I, I remember. Your life. I'm going to answer your question. Saint John of the Cross is a wonderful Christian mystic, and he was in prison during the Spanish Inquisition for two years, and he they they tortured him. He was in a under a latrine. He couldn't lie down. He couldn't sit up, and he couldn't stand up. And that's hell. Can you? I don't. Can't. I can't imagine that agony. That scared the hell out of me. Yeah. Well, he developed. Yes. And he developed, he coined the term dark night of the soul because he was in consistent, perpetual agony. He couldn't die, he couldn't live. And he popped into bliss because sometimes when suffering is so big, so intolerable, we turn, we pop to its opposite. Now, this is an extreme example, but I can tell you that having gone through two serious dark nights of the soul, it is a time to really study the energetic play of opposites and look into the fact that this is so intolerable, don't quit before the miracle because it it always happens and it always happens for the best. And I I said the other last week, I don't have any beliefs, but I do. I believe that this is a benevolent universe. I believe that things happen for the best, not necessarily predetermined because I don't know quite understand how that fits into what I just said, but it, it could, you could interpret it that way. But it just seems to be that things keep getting better and better and better. Now, that doesn't mean I'm getting more and more and more money because, I mean, I know it's easy to love God when the kids are okay, there's money in the bank, the relationship is great, my health is pristine. That's, yeah, boo, rock. But it has to be the same when my health is failing, when the relationship sucks and I got a divorce after 24 years. I wasn't my idea, (laughs) but it, but you know, or the kids are, you know, I mean, one of my daughters developed a fatal cancer. I mean, this is serious and it had to be the same because it is the same. And you can look back and find where it was true that it was better. Now that takes a lot of courage, but we have to be spiritual warriors. If that's one thing, that's not necessarily boot camp the first day because people would leave in droves. So what I t- what I teach. Right, can that- I just clear up on one thing? Yeah. Wait, wait, ask you what you you said. Uh, no matter how bad it gets, there's if you wait to the end of the movie, kind of, um, it's going to be worth it. Is that what you say? It's going to be out? worth it, no matter what. It's you're going. It's going to show you that things always happen for the best. So don't quit before the miracle because it's going to happen, and quit whining. So I decided if I ever do a TV show. It's going to be called Quit Whining, Start Winning. Like it. Sounds so stupid, but I swear, shut up already, everybody. Shut up. I don't want to hear about your problems. Now, listen to me. I'm a psychotherapist. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about that. <laughs> like, I developed a pro. I can, I can listen, like, run, running a track, you know, like, you know, listen, look like I'm listening, and I'm going, catch up, toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Oh, anybody anyway, in therapy. It's, it's really because I mean, people, it's really like, oh, please. <clears throat> and I know, as I said before, I don't suffer fools. So if you're going to do that over and over again, I'm going to say, shut up. And now what? Yeah, now what? Now move on. And what? Right. And then, now what? And rather leave or they stay, but they usually stay. They almost always stay because they don't. True. Do, yeah, they don't want to keep doing that shit. Okay. So here's what I do I say, <clears throat> so my father took a walk every day. And I, we all knew that he, he just did. And I think it's because he was an aristocratic Southern gentleman and they, I, he didn't have a manner, but they, we, he walked, they all walked the manor. There was gentlemen, they walked. So I watched him and he walked. Now he stayed incredibly healthy in, into his nineties. And one day after he had his ice cream at dinner, he put his head down and died. See, that is health to me. <laughs> I was like, that was thoughtful. Thanks daddy. You didn't make us all go crazy and suffer. You just went, darling, this ice cream's delicious. Bonk. <laughs> Where that's a great death and a great life. Yeah, that is. And he never he never said an unkind word. He was not negative, And I never heard him curse. And he never heard me curse. That's it. 
I know. Well, everybody else has, but I didn't do it around him because I just adored him. And so he's a good guy. He's a very, very good man. And he taught me a lot. This and he taught me about walking. So let me tell you about walking. First of all, it's bullshit to think that you have to go pump. You know, this is from Pilates, just one class a week, you know, and I'm I don't even do that. Just you can just get muscle tone. I walk half an hour a day, not with any like audio or music. I just walk. I walk. You walk because the body has to move forward. It's not meant to keep still. You're not you can even wiggle a lot. Like I finally got I can wiggle. I, now I wiggle. I used to sit still because I was taught to sit still and went to girls schools like sit still too hard so now i know i can wiggle and i wiggle but I, you you get up and walk if you're sitting in front of zoom i said do a lot of zoom i get up and move around every hour i shake my sillies out i do that or sometimes when i've really had it with somebody and they're really making me angry i go in the bathroom and go <laughs> and then i come back in and say no i'm what were you saying <laughs> I really do. And they 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 have been told that I do that because I can't stand taking in their stuff so much, but I don't do it in front of them. And I just I shake out, I blow out. But anyway, the walking is important. 20 to 30 minutes a day. And is that what every, you fought your, your old man did? He did a half, about a half hour. He didn't do hour? this. He did a half an hour every day. He walked. Yeah. He went twice a day that you that you know of yeah, that I know of. But I, I lived with him towards I went to see him a lot at the end of his life because my mother had died and Oh my God, they had the best, most beautiful marriage. I mean, they were so deeply in love and it was almost like it was an intrusion if we went to see them. Like, okay, well, we're coming for Christmas. No, no, you're not. No, you're not coming. Wow. Coming. But um, they were very, very, they had a beautiful, deep love and friendship awesome. for 63 years. Awesome. And um, he walked, she walked sometimes, but um, it was just, it was one of those, it was one of those marriages that worked. And, you know, there are very few of them because we're, I mean, my husband once said, honey, can you just take that sign off from around your neck that says man in residence? I said, I don't know if I can. <laughs> but, boy, Catherine, get back to, you, to, to your Okay, so, anyway, so, you, so, I want, so I tell everybody they have to walk. And, you know, people, his time, half hour. People say they don't have time, and I say, yes, you do. And they say, no, I don't. I say, that. well, then you don't come here because you do. And the reason you do is because your mind gets too stuck, mental gets too stuck, I'm not going to work with you unless you're moving forward at least once a day. And I'll know if you don't, because I see energy and I do know, and they do, they do it. That's number one. Number two, napping. Okay. There's something in Chinese medicine that is one of the worst epidemic epidemics of all called liver chi stagnation. It's the liver's right, the liver energy. I call it liver cheese, but it's liver chi, C-H-I, the energy. Energy of, of the liver. Liver is responsible for digestion, hormones, infertility, irritability, everything. And it gets real, it's called sticky blood. And it's, there's a lot, we, we, we just give medicine in Western medicine for um, like blood thinners and everything, but it's a real condition. It's an acidic condition and it makes us icky and cranky and mucousy and phlegmy and all these things, but it's just this, this energy right, right here, right here. And we just can go, it needs to, it needs to nap. We need to nap. For 20 minutes, but not sleep. Now listen, not sleep, but 20 minutes a day between the hours of three and five. Three to five PM is the time of the day when the nervous system is at its lowest. We're not getting any as much oxygen in. And there's a there's a circadian rhythm to the day, 12 hour cycle. This is called bladder time. It has nothing to do with the, the organ. It's just nervous system. It's when it's why the Mediterranean cultures are so much healthier because they siesta. So what we're supposed to do, and this is what I teach, and I just taught a workshop in it, and people got, they got a, a tape of my dulcet tones saying, relax now, relax this, relax that. And don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep. You're supposed to keep the Hertz levels, not beta, but alpha, not theta or delta, but alpha, and you just relax. And you're teaching yourself at least for 100 days, and then you want to go on for the rest of your life to simply learn to relax during those hours. Insomnia is cured, infertility is cured, hormonal menstrual difficulties, and for men, so much. I mean, it's just, it's the most amazing thing. So my dad taught me about napping because he always napped in the afternoon between those hours. I didn't know why. Now, in Silicon Valley, beside the fact that I always tell families to get ping pong tables rather than fight, and I knew about crossing over energies, Silicon Valley, for the last 15 years, has had ping pong tables and insisted that their executives nap. I did not know that. 
Well, if I'm I ahead of my time, huh? huh? <laughs> Wait. So anyway, I, I but I, I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I got my Pilates outfit on. I'm not very dressed appropriately, but that's okay. I think that you everybody should understand that everybody has a half hour to walk and 20 minutes to nap the rest to make their health better for the rest of their life. Then there are two other things. You want to hear them? Yes, please. Okay. Give up sugar. It's over. No sugar. None. You can't have sugar. Sugar is a drug. It will kill you. And it's in everything. It has to go. You can't just cut it back. It's addictive. It's like alcohol and it's in alcohol, but you have to give it up. And believe me, I have had problems with it. And for the last two years I've been off of it and I've never felt better. I, I, I don't need as much sleep. Oh, I feel so much more vital. I feel better. But it, I detox from, I mean, I didn't do a lot of it. I wasn't falling into Hershey bars and ice cream, but I ate this one binge food every night. It was like this digestive biscuit that I ordered from England. And I was, I mean, I would think about it all the time. It was in every room and I would cry. And I, I mean, it was a lot of emotional stuff too, because my mother's English and I have it with my tea. And I just, it was in my car. I mean, even the dogs were backing up when they saw me and they would go, you know, run if I didn't have any, because they were so awful. But the thing is, I would, I sobbed for two weeks with that, just with that detox and um, no sugar at all. Nothing, none. It, it has to be, it can't be an ingredient. So I read, I read labels. It's supposed to be, I think they said the fifth ingredient. That's why I don't go to a 12 step program, but if I did, it's the fifth ingredient down. So you, so I don't have it. What and about fruit? Oh, fruits, fruits, uh, fructose. See, it's, it's a, <clears throat> it's not sucrose. Sucrose is, is an empty calorie, but fructose is a good calorie. Okay. And it's a good, it's, yeah, fructose is fine. I eat a lot of, I eat so much fruit. I eat pound and half of fruit a day. <laughs> okay. I eat a lot of food because I started losing way too much weight. So I really, really eat a lot of food. Like I eat more food than any human being. I've ever, I mean, I, I spend too much. I eat two and a half pounds of vegetables a day, one and a half pounds of fruit, one and a half pounds of protein. I just eat and eat and eat and I still have to keep my weight up. So I guess I really needed to give up the sugar, but I, I never really had a weight problem. I'm really tall. Okay. But, um, yeah. So most people will lose weight if they, because sugar, sugar is an empty calorie. And what it does to the brain, because it just is so bad, it tells the brain you're not getting fed. So next thing you put in your body stores fat because you're going into shock. So store, even if it's um, a piece of meat, a piece of fish, store it as fat because it's the only thing that'll keep you from dying. So you eat sugar or even the stuff. Oh, I love this. I love this. The, the retailers have said, here's sugar free. This is for you. That That's even worse. What do you mean with those chemicals, you mean? The chemicals and it's telling is empty calories. So it's saying you'll go into shock and you're going to get gunky. It's, it's just, it cracks, that cracks me up. It's all, no. So, I mean, soda is horrible. I know you know, horrible. Sugar, but diet soda is just as bad. Well, diet soda, that'll rot your bones. That's phenylalanine. So that'll make your brain demented. And um, I drink, I used to drink a little bit of that, but. I notice because I'm sensitive now, if I have a Diet Coke, which I really like them, I can't think of my words next. Day. I just can't. I can't find my words. And I have problems with that anyway, because I talk so fast. But I mean, I've had that for a long time and I'm kind of old, but not that old. But the thing is, if I have a diet soda or too much of that stuff with, with chemicals in it, the next day I go, um, I know your name. Don't tell me. I know your name. It starts with a K, but mm -mm -mm, I don't know. And oh. Swear to you, that's that happens that, that fast. Brain fog thing, right? Yeah. Well, it's not just yeah, but it's also it's like a little bit of a well. That's what Alzheimer's is. And let's, I mean, just face it. I studied it. It's got it's, it's all that that the the chemicals. It's the tin. It's the metals. It's the oh, it's such. So if you're gonna have a Coca Cola, have it. Have the sugar, because first of all, you're killing your bones with phosphoric acid. You're killing that anyway. So go ahead and do that. But so what I say is, if you're gonna do it, have know the consequences, because I do it all sometimes. Because whatever has a front has a back. The bigger the front, the bigger the back. Yeah. So if you're gonna do it, do it. So you mostly like just the water with. Um, no, I drink. I know I drink iced tea because I'm southern. I drink iced tea. I drink tons of caffeine. Can you tell? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so much black tea, iced tea. All right. Is green tea good? Hmm? Is green tea good? Oh yeah. See, t tea um, tea is okay for the bones because. That certain tannins are okay as um, bone cat. See, people do go, oh, caffeine. Caffeine's so bad. It's so acidic. No, 
Caffeine is not acidic. It's an alkaline bromide. Caffeine is not acidic. There's nothing acidic about caffeine or, I mean, coffee, coffee. Coffee is an alkaline bromide. Sometimes it can mix with certain digestive enzymes and become acidic. But the, the, these ideas, I mean, people come to my whole food cooking workshop and go, well, I eat whole grains all the time. This is whole grain bread. And I point out that they're dumb as shit, <laughs> which I say, and I also say, well, there is more whole grain in that blouse you're wearing than there is in that. Now, what do I mean? And they'll go, huh? and I'll say everything comes from a seed or a, or a grain or something, but it's milled and processed. So a whole grain looks like a grain. So anyway, that just so anyway, they always say ca ca coffee is so acidic, but it isn't. And nothing is acid or alkaline. It's just more acidic, more base. It can't be the pH. We, we have a steady pH balance in our blood and we have to maintain it or we go into coma or have seizures. That's just the way it is. And some things work to keep our blood more pure and some things make it stickier back to liver chi. So what we want to do is we want to rest in during those hours when we get less oxygen and honor the rhythm of life and we'll just get healthier. And I know it works because I used to teach these these workshops called energy medicine for women and they would really they'd fill up and it was donna eden's work and she's just brilliant i mean she takes her work from all sorts of sources and chinese medicine and kinesiology and she's just really she sees that she's a good friend mm -hmm. energy and in this energy medicine for women this one woman came and she was really difficult. She'd been infertile for 15 years. And she said, I don't think anything's going to work. I said, okay, then whatever. But you can come and just learn a couple of protocols. And, you know, she said, well, whatever. And she didn't show up for some of them. And I was teaching the 100-day cure. And what the 100-day cure is in, in um, old Chinese medicine, for 100 days, you rest for 20 minutes during the hours of three to five. And it's to cure all ills. And I said, what have you got to lose? She said, I've tried everything. I said, well, then try this. And I don't want to hear about it anymore until you've tried it. She tried it. She has two children. Nice. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty. So so it's it's walking. It's uh, no sugar. It's from three to five, 20 minutes. And, and there's two more. Oh, two more. Okay. There's, well, there's, two, there's two more. We're not meant to suck off the tit of another animal. And we're not meant. That means we're not meant to have dairy products. We're not supposed to have dairy because... Cow's milk is meant to grow a two-ton calf. And what it does is when we ingest it, it's meant to come out of our breast, not go into our body. And it creates thick, you know, um, strands of mucus. Like this is <clears throat> kind of what I'm dealing with because I'm having half and half again. And I know it. And I know if I give it up, it goes away. But I don't want to because it's that. I mean, it's we're not supposed to have milk. There is no such thing as lactose intolerant. Everybody is two days after we're born. We do not have the enzymes to digest milk. Everybody's lactose intolerant. That's good. The retailer marketers did good. We're not supposed to have it. From a system standpoint, we are not supposed to ingest that milk of another species. Only our mother's milk. Makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. And we're not even supposed to have too much, too much plant-based milk, but it doesn't matter. So that, because it really goes into making ick, ick. Breast tumors are almost always cheesy and gross and from too much dairy. Here's how I know, I'm, get, I'm getting ready to be gross, but go ahead, I'm gonna do it. I was in macrobiotic school, learning to be a macrobiotic counselor. I didn't finish, I only did one of the three um, um, so, uh, three month trainings because it's, it's really big and you have to be able to diagnose cancers, which I kind of can do, but it's a big, big training. Well, there's a woman and you learn to do all sorts of healing, nat natural healings for cancers. And she had a big breast tumor about, about that big. In her, and she was from Wisconsin. Well, I already knew, she, she knew too, that it was going to be because she had too much dairy as a child. Wow. So you make a plaster from taro potatoes. They're these really rough potatoes. You peel them and you make this plaster with, with flour and you put it on your breast every day. And it, during the month, it's, it started to open. And the smell of rotten milk from coming from that tumor. Oh my God. Yeah, well, it was cheese and it was it eventually came out and she's, she's well. Oh, good. oh, thank God, but... Wow. Well, go with, of course, I wasn't going to tell you a bad story, but no, she, if she'd gotten it cut out, it just would have come back because she, she didn't change her diet. So she changed her diet. The skin opened, the tumor came out. It was horrible. I mean, you couldn't be around her in the same room during this time. I mean, she was, it was, it took about two weeks for it to come. Ugh, ugh. 
You had to keep changing the plaster. Wow. But I started that because when I was 40 years old, there was a big, big tumor on my ovary. My grandmother had died of ovarian cancer when I was when she was 40. And I was pretty sure intuitively that I had cancer. And so was the doctor. But I didn't let it get biopsied. I was very, very um, different. I, I couldn't even take an aspirin. I had a cesarean section. I wouldn't even take pain pills. <laughs> I was really wow. Really not do that again. I don't recommend it. I was stupid. That was stupid. It took a long time to get better. But anyway, so I I was uh, staying up in my our, our country house in the Berkshire Mountains of Massachusetts near the Cushy Institute. We had a place in Manhattan, and I was taking care of my baby. But I was I was exhausted. I, there was something so wrong with me. And I saw this met this woman down in a health food market. She's a very you know hippy dippy up there, and it was it was wonderful. It was, this is 1988, and I, I, no, I wasn't 40 then, but anyway, this was when I know it was, I'm not that old, but, but the, but the point is, is that I was sick and this woman said, I, my husband had a brain tumor and we healed it through macrobiotics. I said, I want to learn it. She came to my home that night with all this cookware and I started to cook macrobiotically and with six weeks, I discharged that tumor vaginally. I did, it got rid of it. Now I wish I had collected it, but it went down the drain too fast. But the thing is it, I healed, we, I was healed. And I've done it with, over and over with people. And it's just, the body doesn't want to have this stuff. It usually gets rid of it through the, through through somewhere where it can discharge it, through yeah. the anus or the breast or the penis or something. Right. And it gets rid of it if you do it naturally. And, and it worked. And I stayed on this kind of wonderful regime for five years. And I've never known health like that, oh, ever, oh. ever. That's something. And I was happier than I've ever been. I mean, there's no, when you eat locally seasonal local seasonal foods and eat simply six tastes at every meal. It was, it was a lot of work, but, and I cooked my own foods and I had my own garden and I had my own root cellar and I've never been happier. And it's a lot of work, but it was hard to, to change over to, we, we moved out West. We were living in the mass in Massachusetts and New York. We moved to Reno, Nevada. And it, that's like a throwback to hundred years to medieval times where people tease their hair and smoke cigarettes in restaurants. I, I couldn't keep it going. I couldn't. And I'm like, yeah, they're going to reelect Johnson or something, you know, like <laughs> I was so gross. So I, I had it broadened out a little bit. Now, the first time I even had a bite of something else, I had some of my husband's um, Caesar salad in a restaurant. I got a fever of 103 and a rash. Oh, yeah. So I had to, I had to go. I had to sort, sort of start eating out. I mean, doing. Yeah, I was just that too pure. I was too clean. Uh -huh. So I did. And I got I'm, I, I'm fine. Wow. It's a hey. pretty. So, what? Yeah, uh, Catherine, we're gonna have to uh, save that last one uh, for for next time because we're out of time here. But wow, uh, it goes Sorry. quick. It goes quick. <laughs> but uh, Catherine, let me give you the last word though. Anything you want to leave us with, and and um, let us know how to get a hold of you, please. Okay, SouthernFriedSpirituality dot com. Sorry, I was so yakky because I, I, but I just want to say, walk twenty minutes, thirty minutes, rest twenty minutes. That's what the takeaway is. And next time we'll go over the energy medicine protocol. I'm sorry, I act so much, but I really do have four things that are so much fun and easy to remember. And I do have them on my website, Southern Fried Spirituality and in the YouTube um, videos. Awesome. All right, guys. Hey, that's the one and only uh, Catherine Manning. Uh, I love your show. I love, uh, uh, love your take on things. So refreshing. Thank you. Thank right, you. Thanks we'll be listening. right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcast and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you can now listen live on the MyTuner Radio and online Radio Box apps for iOS, Android, and the Amazon App Store. Or check us out online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com or search Podcast Business News Network on OnlineRadioBox.com slash US so you don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. 
We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.